Josiah was only eight years old when he became king of Judah. His father had been wicked, as had the Jewish kings and culture for generations before him. In the eighth year of his reign, scripture records that Josiah began to seek the Lord, 2 Chronicles 34 verse 3. In his seeking, he set about restoring the house of the Lord. The name Josiah in the Bible means healed of the Lord or the Lord will support, according to Easton's Bible Dictionary. In his day the Lord did indeed bring healing and restoration to the people of Judah. The workers found the lost and forgotten Torah. When it was brought to Josiah's attention and the words read aloud, he wept, tore his clothes, and grieved deeply for the ways he and his people had turned away from the Lord. He sought the counsel of the Lord through Huldah the prophetess, a rare occurrence of a female prophet, and she encouraged him with the Lord's words of blessing. After that Josiah led the people in a Passover celebration to rival all Passovers. And for the rest of Josiah's days, the people of Judah sought the Lord, 2 Chronicles 34-35. 1. You're never too young to be used mightily for the Lord. Josiah was eight years old when God providentially set him on the throne. In the years when Josiah was just stepping into adulthood, God wooed his heart. Josiah had a soft heart that responded wholly to the Lord. If you are young or praying for a young person, don't doubt for a second that God can use you in the midst of your growing years. Two, a lot of healing change can happen in a short time. Josiah tore down all the places of false worship that had ensnared the people of Judah for over 70 years. Some of those places and idols had been set up much longer. Sometimes, it feels like the strongholds in life or things that need to change have just been there too long to change. Maybe we are so tired of pushing against them, we start to give up hope we will ever be free of them. But the story of Josiah can encourage us that when the Lord's timing is just right, in a flash God can set everything right, release what binds us, and bring us into a time of restoration. We can't give up hope to pray for these things in our life or in the lives of those around us. 3. God can use unlikely people to speak into our lives. Josiah, Josiah was young, yet the Lord used him to realign the people with their calling and their God. At a time when he was probably young enough that most of his subjects could have been his parent or grandparent, God used him to steer their hearts home to him. Holda, it was unusual for a woman to be a prophet, but the Lord used Huldah, the prophetess, to bring Josiah words of promise and encouragement. Nico, finally, the Lord used Pharaoh Nico to warn King Josiah, yet he didn't listen, and Josiah was ultimately killed in battle at a young age, 2 Chronicles 35 verses 20 to 27. God can, and does, speak through unlikely sources because He cares so much for us that He uses anything and everything to reach out to us. It is wise to make sure that what someone speaks into our life matches up with Scripture, but we also don't want to miss something just because it comes from an unusual place. Like Josiah, we want to have tender hearts. King Josiah killed in battle. After all this, when King Josiah had prepared the temple, Pharaoh Necho of Egypt went up to fight at Carchemish on River Euphrates, and King Josiah went out to fight him. But he sent envoys to him, saying, What have we to do with each other, King of Judah? I am not coming against you this day, but against the house with which I am at war. And God has commanded me to hurry. See supposing God, who is with me, lest he destroy you. Nevertheless, 
King Josiah did not turn away from him but disguised himself to fight with him. He did not listen to the words of Pharaoh Necho from the mouth of God but came to fight in the plain of Megiddo. And the archers shot King Josiah. And the king said to his servants, Take me away, for I am badly wounded. So his servants took him out of the chariot and carried him in his second chariot and brought him to Jerusalem. And he died and was buried in the tombs of his fathers. All Judah and Jerusalem mourned for King Josiah. Prophet Jeremiah also uttered a lament for King Josiah, and all the singing men and singing women have spoken of King Josiah in their laments to this day. They made these a rule in Israel, behold, they are written in the laments. 2 Chronicles 35 verses 20-27 Achievement of King Josiah He cleansed and repaid the temple. He purged all the land of Israel of high places and idols and desecrated altars of idols. In all, King Josiah brought a reformation. He turned the hearts of the people away from idol worship to God and led them to make a covenant with God to serve Him only. He organized the grandest Passover in the history of Israel and Judah. Josiah's Revival King Josiah immediately and energetically set out on a campaign to obey the Lord's instructions, found in the newly rediscovered Bible. First he assembled the population at Jerusalem and read the entire Bible, i.e., the first five books of our modern Bible, aloud to them. He renewed the Lord's covenant to obey all that was written in the Bible he had just read. He invited the people to pledge themselves to the covenant, and they did. Next, Josiah toured Judah and Israel, destroying shrines of false worship and stopping the sins committed on behalf of idols. The list in 2 Kings 23 of towns, shrines, idols, and sins shows the depth of Josiah's commitment and the lengths of his efforts at revival. Among the shrines he closed down and desecrated against further use were sites of temple prostitution and human sacrifice. When Josiah arrived at Bethel, he found the shrine of the golden calf cult built by Israel's King Jeroboam. To render the site unfit for future idol worship, Josiah exhumed from the nearby cemetery the bones of the idol priests and burned them on Jeroboam's altar, thereby fulfilling a prophecy spoken 300 years earlier in Jeroboam's day. Finding also the grave of this prophet, who had named Josiah in his prophecy, he left it undisturbed. Finally, Josiah hosted the Passover celebration, commemorating the Lord's work in freeing Israel from slavery in Egypt. The Lord had instructed his people to celebrate Passover annually, but this had not been obeyed. Josiah called the people to celebrate, and he himself supplied them with 33,000 animals for sacrifice, all from his own farm. All of Judah came, and many people from Israel, those who had not been deported in the Assyrian captivity. In that regard, this was the most complete Passover celebration since the days of the prophet Samuel, about 400 years earlier.